Students on their way to class in northern Uganda. Until recently, this was not a common sight. In fact, education wasn't guaranteed at all. During the more than 10 years that the Lord's Resistance Army terrorized the North, schools were boarded up and villages abandoned. Entire communities moved into displacement camps, which became virtual shanty towns. Cultural traditions broke down and families were caught up in a cycle of dependency and despair. The displacement in, in northern Uganda was, was severe. Uh, we were talking about 90 to 95 percent of the population being displaced. It's, it's almost unheard of. It was basically a total displacement, which means that areas outside the urban centers uh, have been abandoned for, for, for a decade or more, uh, which means that everything has basically fallen apart. When the fighting stopped and displaced families were finally able to go back, education became a top priority. Yet villages and schools had been left to molder for years. We received a lot of requests from our head teachers, and the most important thing for us was also to, to know that it's the community's wish to move from the camp to the villages of origin, that there were enough people back in the village, that the teachers wanted to be back. Um, so then we started assisting them with the move of material from the camp to the villages of origin. Armed with brush clearing tools supplied by the UN Refugee Agency and the European Commission for Humanitarian Aid, parents in the Lequira school district took to the bush to slash the way back to their school. The parents have also now got the chance to help the school. From there, they were not willing to contribute anything in the school because they were saying that that was not their school. So now when we ask them to contribute, maybe something to help, they do it easily. James Ojara is back in class and happy and proud to be at his own school again. While a queer school has reopened, the village of Capeta has been less fortunate. During the years of conflict, its school was destroyed. Ironically, Capeta had one of the first schools in the north, built in 1911. But now Capeta only holds class for grades one and two, taught under the trees. Older children, like Samuel, are obliged to walk more than eight kilometers every day if they want to go to school. He recently gave up. Instead, Samuel watches as other children go off to school each day, and he heads off to the fields with his father. His outlook for the future has changed and his father, along with other parents, feel that without a school, their village will stagnate. While Capeta suffers, Loquira celebrates the fact that it has a school and its children will have a future. But restarting classes wasn't easy. Parents helped renovate the classrooms, but all the school desks were left behind in the camp. The UN Refugee Agency helped out by transporting all the furniture back to various schools. The status of our school is not all that very good in, in terms of finance. And if the school was to return on its own, it was going to be very, very difficult. Because like the money we receive is so mega that we cannot even hire a vehicle. At home, James Ojara also sees a difference. After replanting their land, the family is no longer dependent on aid. Yet for James, there's still uncertainty. <laughs> 
Piana Rubana Rupe, à Tani Caracuan, Guarman Rutul, New Patrol. His mother is the sole support for the family, and now she is also sick. Her only goal is to make sure her children can finish school. Education is the future for these two communities, yet in Capeta it's still out of reach. In Laquira, while the school is restored, uncertainty remains. Families here say the struggle to recover from the years of violence won't be finished until all children in northern Uganda can get an education. <laughs>